I'm going to go into our tool palette here and I'm going to uh, select a Sphere 3D, drag it out on my canvas, go into edit mode. You're going to see I have matte cap gray selected from previous videos. You can select any matte cap you'd like. And in order to make this sculptable, because right now it's a ZBrush primitive, we have to go up here to make poly mesh 3D. And now we have a sculptable mesh. Now let's switch back over to the standard brush. I'm going to hit BST, select my standard brush here. And let's talk about some of these settings. The first thing I'm going to do is, since we have our standard brush selected and I start sculpting on my object, and let's turn off polyframe here, you're going to see as I'm sculpting, or I can hold down Alt while I sculpt, and it's deforming the surface of my mesh. If I turn polyframe back on and undo a couple times to get rid of that, if I change my Z intensity down to zero, I can still tessellate my geometry, but I'm not going to deform my object. I'm just going to turn that down to zero temporarily on my standard brush just to demonstrate just the tessellation of the surface. So let's hit undo one more time, control Z. And let's talk about some of this terminology in here. So by default, adapt to size and combined is turned on. If you turn e both of these off, you've effectively disabled Sculptures Pro Mode. I mean, you can also, probably a better thing to do would just be to turn Sculptures Pro Mode off. But for Sculptures Pro to tessellate the surface of your mesh, you're probably going to want both of these on. Now, adaptive size, if you hover over any menu item in ZBrush, you're going to see, okay, a brush base adaptive size is the name of it. If you hit control or hold that down, you're going to get a longer description. So that's just like a built-in help menu. But we'll go ahead and talk about what adaptive size and combine do and how they affect the tessellation of your mesh. So with adaptive size turned on, if I have a small brush size and I go over the surface of my mesh here, you're going to see we have very, very... Uh, high resolution tessellation. It's making my geometry very small. As I, If I tap the S key and drag my draw size up, or of course you can go up here to the draw size, or you can hold down the space bar and change your draw size. As you make your brush size bigger, it's tessellating the object with larger polygons. If I make my draw size even bigger, those polygons get bigger, and bigger, and bigger. Now the very cool thing about what that's doing, and I'll go ahead and do that big brush size again. I'm going to go over here to the side so I don't get rid of this one here. So again, a very large brush size is going to take this geometry and start getting rid of and reducing the amount of geometry on the sphere. Now the reason it's able to do that is because we have this combine button on. So if I hover over this, you're going to see it's combine, divide, and undivide mode, so kind of a tessellate and decimate, which we talked about a little bit earlier. So with combined on, we're able to not only add polygons by changing my brush size, we're also able to subtract polygons by changing my brush size. So for example, if I have a small brush size over here, and I go ahead and subdivide this entire area here, and I make my brush size larger. If I go over this, you're going to see it's removing polygons as needed because I have combined turned on. If I ever turn that combined off, it's only going to subdivide the geometry, but it's never going to get rid of geometry. So if I make my brush size larger in here, it's just going to leave it alone. Now, if I go out here, you'll see it'll start tessellating this because these geometry, the size of these polygons out here, or the size of these original polygons, are larger than the threshold that's being allowed by the subdivide size. We'll get to that in a second. Probably a better example is if we go over here to the snake hook, and then we have adaptive size with combine turned on, and we drag out a tentacle right here, you're going to see as the tentacle gets smaller, it's actually removing geometry. So as I drag this out, in order to keep these all consistent, it's adding geometry here where the geometry was large. So as I press on the surface, it's adding geometry because it needs more geometry because I'm telling it to tessellate that much. But as I drag this out, it's removing geometry. If I turn combined off, it's only going to add geometry. So as I drag this out, you're going to see it's adding geometry and see how much different those two results are. If we go in here and change this, you're going to see it's only going to add geometry. And as I get smaller and smaller, it's not going to decimate or undivide the mesh to maintain consistency. It's only going to be able to add geometry. So generally speaking, if you want nice, consistent geometry, you want to not only add geometry, but have the ability to remove geometry at the same time. And that's where that combine mode comes in. So let's hit Control Z to get rid of those. And we'll go over here to a nice, even side of our mesh here. Now, the smooth brush uses this undivide ratio. If we hold down Shift to smooth, and we have combine turned on, you're going to see I'm able to tessellate this geometry. Same thing as if I use my standard brush here, I'm able to tessellate this geometry. 
Now you're going to see if I hold down, if I tessellate this geometry with the standard brush and then hold down shift to smooth, it's actually going to tessellate at a slightly higher ratio, and that's because this undivide ratio is set to 1.25. To make this a little bit more obvious, what I'm going to do is take my standard brush, make my brush size about this big, and then use that to tessellate my geometry. Then hold down shift. I'm not going to change my brush size at all, and you're going to see the polygons get a little bit bigger. So if I undo both of those and change this undivide ratio back down to 1, you're going to see as I sculpt with my standard brush, and you can see I'm sculpting with Sculptor Plus mode because I have a purple brush icon here. If I hold down Shift, it changes to an orange icon. And now when I smooth, it's keeping the exact same tessellation size. So if I take this undivide ratio and I crank it over to the right, it's all the way to three. I can sculpt using my standard brush and it's go ahead and it's tessellating the object. If I hold down Shift to smooth without changing the brush size, it's going to go ahead and smooth and remove a lot of geometry. So that's where that undivide ratio comes in, is when you hold down shift to smooth, you can smooth without changing your brush size and tessellate or decimate or tessimate your object at a higher ratio. So let's change this undivide ratio back down to one. So now at this point we can sculpt and we can smooth and it's doing the exact same tessellation density. Now let's talk about the subdivide size. Right now it's set to one, so when I'm sculpting on my mesh, with this brush size I have, it's making it this big. If I make my brush size bigger, it's going to make the tessellation this size, and it's going to actually remove geometry. If I make it even bigger, it's going to continue to remove geometry. And of course, if I make it smaller, the geometry is going to get smaller. That is a function of this adaptive size turned on. If I turn this off and then start making my geometry, you're going to see as I make my brush size smaller, it's not going to do anything. As I make my brush size bigger, it'll get rid of geometry that's smaller than the subdivide size, but it's going to keep everything at that uniform subdivide size. No matter how big I make my brush, if I make my brush really small, it's not going to do anything because adaptive size is turned off and my subdivide size is telling it what size to make these polygons. If I increase that subdivide size, now it's going to make really huge polygons. If I make that a really small subdivide size, now it's going to let me affect my geometry, even with adaptive size turned off. So with adaptive size turned off, it's basically disregarding your brush size and, and allowing you to change the underlying geometry, allowing you to tessellate the geometry only based on the subdivide size slider. So for example, if you want to use your standard brush and you always want your tessellation to be at a certain size, you can change this subdivide slider to the tessellation that you want, make sure adaptive size is turned off, and then no matter how big you make your brush, it's always going to tessellate to that exact size. So even with a very small brush size, it's giving me this tessellation size, and with a very large brush size, it's giving me the exact same tessellation size. Now we're going to talk about performance later on in this series, but really quickly, just to kind of explain why you might want to have combine turned off. So you can have adaptive size turned on and then it's affected by your brush size here. So you can use your brush size to determine your density. So when you're sculpting in details, let's go back to our moose head here. And then with our standard brush, I'm going to go ahead and crank my Z intensity up again. So again, with adaptive turned on, we can go through here. We can really zoom in on our object and we can start sculpting in very finite details. And if we turn the polyframe on, you're going to see as I'm passing this brush over here, because we have adaptive size on and combined on, my brush size is dictating the subdivide size. It's also being affected by this. So let's change this back to one, and that'll give us a subdivide size of one. And again, if we crank that up, it's going to give us a subdivide size that's very large, put it at two. Or if we crank this way down, it's going to give us a subdivide size that's very dense. So you can kind of dial in the exact ratio that kind of works for you. And again, you can go into your individual brush settings, brush, sculptures pro, turn off, use global. And for individual brushes, you can set these to whatever you want, the subdivide size, the undivide ratio. So you can be very, very specific based on your brushes. But if you want it to be a global setting, changing this is going to do the trick. But we'll go ahead and set this back to one. And our undivided ratio is also set to one. So as we sculpt and as we smooth, it's going to give us the exact same uh, tessellation density here. So again, the brush size is dictating the tessellation density, and since we have combine turned on, not only is it, if we go ahead and make this very, very dense here, so let's say we have a lot of geometry in here and not very much geometry in here, and then we go to kind of a middle one. So this is going to add geometry here, but then as we cross over this, it's going to take away geometry here. It's able to do that because we have combine turned on, 
And because it's doing two complex operations at once, you may notice on high resolution meshes, it's gonna slow down your performance a little bit. So in this instance, you may wanna turn combined off, which is gonna allow you to add geometry as needed, but it won't ever take away geometry. So if you know you're only gonna be sculpting details in your mesh, you can have combined turned off and it will increase the performance of your brush strokes. There's other ways around this performance stuff. Again, we're gonna get into that later, but I just wanted to bring that up while we're talking about adaptive size and the combine options. One other thing to keep in mind though, is when we have combine turned off, that means we're only adding tessellation. We're never removing tessellation. So again, if we undo back here, and we've got high density, medium density, and low density, with combine turned on, we're able to subdivide geometry where it's low, maintain geometry where it's the same, and then remove geometry where it's too dense, all in one stroke. With combine turned off, we're able to subdivide geometry. It's gonna maintain the same geometry in this area because it's the same as what it would end up tessellating to in, in, anyway. But when we get to here, it's not gonna do anything to this. It's not gonna remove geometry because combined is turned off, so it's not gonna decimate or decimate uh, while it's going over here. So just keep in mind with combined turn off and you've got adaptive size turned on. So when you make really small brush sizes, you're adding more geometry. You're only adding geometry. You're never removing geometry. So very quickly, you could end up with very, very dense poly count. So up here, you can see your point count. With combined turn off, you could end up with a very quickly a very dense mesh. So just something to kind of keep in mind and balance while you're using these brush options.